Now let us go to the habits. Now what, what you are going to learn today from the metta sutta, two aspects, 15 skillful habits and the practice of metta, unlimited, unconditional. Number one, what skillful habit are we supposed to practice in the first place, in our Dhamma journey, especially this is about Dhamma journey. Uh, you may star, have started your Dhamma journey uh, probably from a scratch, right? But uh, it is not an excuse for you not having started it in the proper way. You may be a nominal Buddhist from a so called country, maybe you may have started from your mother, father, or whoever, but it is not an excuse for not having started from the proper way, especially according to what these sayings are all about. The first thing that we need to practice in our spiritual journey, uh, in addition to our secular life, is sakku. We should be a talented person. Is this word very familiar with you in your Dhamma, Dhamma dictionary, Dhamma vocabulary? Sakko. Is anybody familiar with this term before? Sakko? I know Sakka, but it's not related. Ah. Sakka, the king of gods. Yes, it is related. Oh, I see. We get same Pali. So, Sakku means uh, Sakkachang Dhanandatva Sakku Huti. The, the, the man who is called Sakka, it is a position. There are different men becomes becoming sakka at different times. Okay, so uh, the word sakka means that this particular person was very talented in giving dana before he became the sakka. Talented, all right. And there's another story about sakka. This is not about the sakka. Okay, don't get misunderstood. I'm explaining you the term, Pali term, that he and his family sisters, they were making a road for the people. They each uh, took turns and then they passed away. He had 33 people in that family. All they were reborn in the Tavatinsa. Tavatinsa started from the 33 people, it says the heaven call. Interesting. So, anyways, the term Sakka, uh, the literal meaning of Sakka means talented. Let us talk about talent, uh, being talented. Do we need to be talented in our spiritual life? Are we supposed to be? Or we just think that uh, do whatever we can? Uh, should Are we supposed to be talented? It depends. It is an individual by individual thing, right? Some people just practice the way that they can. It is okay, no problem. But if you can be talented, then you could understand more. Because there is not only one way to train your mind. Some people say there is only one way to train your mind. Mind cannot be trained in one way. Not just sitting down and do that. It is one way. There are many other ways to train the mind. Chanting is also training the mind. Some people think chanting is such a very low practice in Buddhism. No. It is a way of training the mind. Some people can focus their mind. Some others cannot. Who cannot train their mind through the chanting? Those who do not have a lot of respect for the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, then cannot train the mind through the chanting. Because they always think this is not important. I have to go learn something from a laptop, computer, book. Were they available at the time of the Buddha? No books, no laptop, no computer. It is by listening to the Dhamma talk that something happened in their mind and change in their heart and then entered whatever the liberation that they were eligible. These, were, these things were in addition, ad additional ancillary stuff. They are not very, very much, uh, I would say, necessary. But nowadays, we are learning from these things. So, this these may be def definitely supportive. So, we need, we need talents. Talents in the sense of training the mind. Can I know what are the ways you train your mind other than the meditation? Right. Very interesting question, right? Because you come here, you uh, practice Buddhism to train your mind, right? Isn't it bad to ask a question, how do you train your mind? What are the ways? Huh? 
reflection ah, this is very important aspect reflection we call it pati sevana in pali now see monk, when you offer something to monks when they are eating they have to reflect about the food i am not eating just for the beautification i am not eating for um, so and so i am eating just for the sustenance of my body when they wear the robe when they stay in uh, uh, kutis temples when they take medication reflect right otherwise they become uh, they become slaves to the lay people's effort efforts yes reflection that is one thing very important thing other ways of training your mind how do you train your mind do you do you accept that you it is good to train your mind ah okay okay then what are the ways reasoning uh, intellect intellectualizing rationalizing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other ways listening to music uh, maybe uh, uh, music now in this case maybe uh, teaching dhamma through music it's music is the language of everybody right because our languages are only languages of us but music is the language of everybody universal language so if somebody can put dhamma into a song many people can benefit from that not only one person you have a group here right you have a group here in this center i gems is it here uh, two groups yeah wonderful thing to do not many people can do and then other ways reflection music uh, rationalizing by doing some good good ah uh, okay so engaging in good activities ah uh, okay then what else pardon me ha huh? think before think before act what is it call what is it call introspection uh, you are you are so thoughtfulness huh? thoughtfulness you are very thoughtful in uh, doing any activity very thoughtful right probably you are not reacting you are responding uh, resp responding to events because we talk for an event right otherwise we won't talk right because let's say your mom talks to you so that's an event so you're going to talk to her and there is something that you want to address even so kind of respond into the event so thoughtfulness some people say i was not mindful sorry about that so mindfulness so can attach that to other ways of uh, training your mind you should tell me everybody should tell me a way because you should have your own way of training your mind right sutta study yeah you nail it down to this point <laughs> others positive thoughts creating positive thoughts mm -hmm. why do we train our mind why because our mind is naturally uh, with raw thoughts our raw thoughts are they are crude they are raw they are not refined they are mostly into akusalas mostly our raw thoughts are mostly into akusalas uh, i would tell you a very good example akusala mean unwholesome let's say in order to do a good thing is very challenging than doing a bad thing telling a lie is easier than telling the truth yes it's an effort you think twice couple things affect one thing is that uh, it is not very necessary for many people to tell the truth the second is that Uh, there are other repercussions with telling the truth so you have to face all them so people avoid telling that uh, hitting other people and not hitting other people which one is very easy uh, attacking hitting other person or not hitting not attacking other person which one is easy huh? not attacking is easier 
Huh? It's easier. Yeah, yeah. We, we become angry uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, most most of us. Yes, because we are looking at dharma for the uh, wrong side first, akusal side first. That means executing, doing uh, good activities are little challenging. I would not say challenging, they are little challenging than executing good things. So that is why we need to train the mind. We don't need to take a chance. Why the Buddha says Panati Pata Veramani, not killing, not stealing? Why he couldn't have told us take care of other people? take care of other people's stuff, uh, sexual uh, behaving and then uh, telling the truth. Why he didn't tell like that? Why he said uh, not doing that, not, 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 not? Why in that negative way? A good question, right? Why he told it in a negative way, I mean in, in, in not doing aspect. Why, why, why he couldn't have told in doing aspect? It is because in the sealer you have to create the boundary. Then the rest is implied. The rest is implied. You know what to do. If you don't do, if you don't cross that level, the rest is fine. If you don't kill, the rest is fine. Sealer has always some boundaries, some parameters, moral compassing. That moral compassing is necessary. That's why uh, we need to train the mind. No, this is an extra thought that I ask you, that means when you are a talented person, you train your mind very well. Actually are we training the mind or are we training our thoughts? Tell me, if mind is a faculty, are we training the faculty or are we training the objects of the mind? What are we training actually? Ah, we are actually, we are training the object, that means we are training our thoughts, not the mind actually. But we take it as the mind. That is why in the Satipattana Sutta, Buddha says, Chitta Anupasana. That means, you are, you are reflecting upon your thoughts, not the mind. But thoughts are in the mind, right? Because in Buddhism, there is no one mind. That's the issue. Why do I say so? In the western concept of mind, philosophical mind, there is one mind. So they don't believe the next life. It is one mind. But in the Abhidhamma, in the Abhidhamma teachings or in the other teachings of Sutta, Buddha says many minds, actually not many minds, many thoughts, chittas. Chittas need to be trained. What are the chittas? Sixteen chittas. Raga chitta, lustful thought. Then hatred thoughts delusional thoughts, right? So and so forth. So in order for you to train your thoughts, you should be a talented person. On the secular level, you could be a talented person, you could be a good uh, guitarist, you could be a good musician, you could be an engineer, you could be a professor, you could be so and so forth. But at the same time, more importantly, you should be a talented person in training your thoughts. Isn't it, isn't it important? It's very important to us. That is where the practice gets started.